today we've got quite a setup going on here <laughs> and um, I didn't expect this to be the case but you know sometimes uh, things just happen and just take you somewhere on some avenue which you didn't expect to go on <laughs> anyway it's not all entirely set up just yet uh, I'm actually gonna set it up with you all but I did not expect myself to get into dabbling with VHS and analog video and things like this. It just sort of happened, and it happened by accident. I'll explain later on. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high-quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If, like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website hot mint tea and a really cold day. Perfect. So a couple of years ago, must have been a couple of years ago, I got myself one of these. Amitek Fusion Gen Lock for Amiga. I mean, I had the Super Gen before, which you, some of you probably would have seen in my, um, my holiday special that I did back then. Uh, back is a couple of years ago. I don't know exactly which year it was for. Um, I'll give a clip of it. And I was messing around with the camcorder and you know messing around with that. The problem with that super gen was its NTSC. And um, yeah, I had a lot of trouble and <laughs> quite an adventure getting a picture up with it. You know, setting the Amiga 1200 to NTSC. And you know, the only problem was I needed an external display that was NTSC that just didn't rolled like scroll the image so much um yeah there was just complications so i decided i want to just like get one that's how i mean it's not a super gem but it seems interesting nonetheless now some uh, coaxial adapters let's move that like i said the label's coming off i need to find a way to stick that back on now when goofing around with the Amiga back in my childhood, I was quite young and there was no way that someone was going to get me one of these, <laughs> even though I was asking my brother for one. I was like, can you get one of these so I can mess around with it? And he was just like, you know, he was a teenager himself, um, so he's not going to be <laughs> buying this kind of thing, this kind of gear. So yeah, I always wanted it when I was uh, looking at the magazines, but now I finally get a chance to mess around with it like I wanted to back then. <laughs> so, we have the RGB monitor here, which I'm guessing, I'm figuring it out without even looking at this thing. It comes with a disc, yeah. I think that, from what I remember, is video titling. Yeah, home video titler. There was also that video titler with the, um, the colored bands, the, the test card, um, from, it's a cover disc. I believe is in my old place. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, I've got all my cover discs there. By chance, did I bring it? Did I bring it? Because I brought like a handful, but there's loads which I haven't. Okay, so this pretty much seems straightforward to me. This goes in the computer with this cable here, yeah? So that goes um, the video out from the Amiga, goes into here. Now, RGB monitor, I'm figuring that is going to be a pass-through, so that's going to go to a monitor, as you can see what you're doing on the Amiga. That chroma key, um, it's for a chroma key setup, I'm not going to bother with that. So, now here I think these are a composite in and out. So your camcorder will go in here, the composite out from your camcorder will go inside here, and then the output here will go into your VCR for recording. And yeah, it pretty much seems to be how it is. I'd be surprised if it's any other way. So yeah, I don't think I need to no. <laughs> just, just connect stuff up. <laughs> That's how I work. I just figure things out and you know. I wish to connect the monitor output of that genlock to this one. This Philips monitor, which is um, seems to be for the Amiga. I repaired this in the previous video, I think it's the same one which I repaired. So let's um, turn this. Okay, so this is RGB in. 
And this normally goes to the Amiga. Amiga's RGB out, but this time it's gonna go through the Gen 1. That's so one thing I like about these um, these Amiga monitors, or these computer monitors. They're not as bulky and heavy as <laughs> normal TVs or um, PVMs or BVMs and things like that. It's kind of like easy to, you know, transport them around. Of course, not as much as, <laughs> you know, flat screens, but flat screens don't exist right now in this video. <laughs> At least it's not for like music purposes. I'm going to try to use um, as many vintage stuff in doing what I'm doing and faffing around as, as possible. Okay, so we have here, RGB monitor. Okay, to there. So we just need to, everything else will be connected once I set the Mega 500 up with this. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna connect the, just put it there. Okay, so that goes here. And I wanna stick that on, it's really bugging me. We're gonna try and get a new flooring on this. Um, neither is it keen on this gray carpet. We're not keen on the color gray. <laughs> I'm gonna use the um, Aga 500. Um, the only reason I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a standard 500 setup, but the only reason I'm gonna use that is um, just for the sake of using the Godec and just using it as a DF1 boot selector. Um, unless I really need to accelerate it or put the profile up, I'll do it, but I don't think. I wanna try and do it like stock Amiga. One thing I'd like to say about the Aga 500, it makes things much simpler and much more straightforward. You know, you can select profiles. I really love that about it. I actually do need to update the firmware. <laughs> you know, that is much needed still. And, you know, one of their guys did email me and send me that. I still need to respond to that. It's just so much has been happening. <laughs> I've been so busy doing other things. Um, but, yeah, that I still need to do. So, you will notice that it's in the older firmware and the older thing. So, don't mind that. It functions still <laughs> for what I want to do right now. I'm going to use um, our first family tape recorder, this one, the very same one. I'm going to use that as a monitor, as a sound monitor um, for the Amiga. I just I want all, whatever it is to go through there just so we can hear. Basically just using it as a set of speakers. <laughs> and um, the only problem with it is it's got this monitor switch, right? And it's only two volumes. <laughs> it's off or on. So I just hope it's not going to be too loud because you can't adjust it. It's one of those, yeah, those really early 80s ones. <laughs> it's the Bush 7070, by the way, if you want to look it up. It's just quite uncommon. I don't see it so much. Um, it was actually difficult locating any information for it or anything like this. Okay, so I'll compose it out from the camera itself. This, like, Frankenstein adapter <laughs> that I've made. <laughs> This goes into the input here. I really hope these are composite, by the way, because they, they, the inputs on this gen look and the input map on this gen look, because they're not yellow, they're black. So I just hope there's not something stupid like RF or <laughs> anything like this. Oh, I never thought of that. I really, it's the last thing I need. It'll be, it'll be freaking composite. It'd be ridiculous for it to be RF. Okay, so after the gen look goes, in the VCR. Yeah. Also, I hope this gen lock is actually working because I haven't tested it. I should have really tested it, shouldn't I? Uh, when I actually um, got hold of it. But anyway, um, yeah, camera, camcorder is connected, output is connected to that, monitor is connected to this. All you just have to do is just turn it on, moment of the truth. Hopefully, it works. Well, that's monitoring. That should work, shouldn't it? Let's connect the monitor directly to the Amiga, this one, to see if... Because it should actually have a signal going through. So see if the monitor is set correctly. And take the ACA out. Because there's no... Um... Oh, do you know why? Because there's no... <laughs> the lead came out, didn't it? That's why. For goodness sake. Turn everything off. I must 
must have like knocked it out or something. There we go. Yeah, it's quite easy to come out. Right, that should work now. It does but freaking frilly as freak. Why? Why do you like that for? I think it's gonna be fine. Just hope there's no break in the cable or any stupid thing like this. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the cable or anything like this. Um, I think the port at the back is just a bit funny <laughs> of this monitor. Um, I've repaired it once before, um, probably temperamental. We have been moving it around, so something's just gone wrong. I just need to have another look at this. So that's on the list for kind of repairing because it's been working fine. So now it says no video detected, of course, because I haven't turned the camcorder on. Let's do that now. I replaced the battery pack and that was in the um, the summer special. If you haven't watched that and you want, and you're missing the summer, then uh, yeah, I will link them in the description below. Where's the darn switch gun? Okay, so I'll put the uh, camcorder on top of the TV and uh, connect it in. Yeah, it's all connected. Let's just turn it on now. And hey, it works! Okay, so when I put picture only on, yeah, picture only, so you can see a faint ghosting of the um, the, the workbench disc there. Um, if you put it on that, so it's that only, and then you have the mix. But the fader control doesn't seem to do much. Why? I don't know. Isn't this supposed to fade between the picture and the graphics? That doesn't seem to do much at all. Maybe it's because... I don't know, maybe it does something else. It does something slightly, but not too much. Like it makes the brightness of the picture go up a bit. It seems to be only these three mods. You cannot connect do it at the same time or anything. But anyway, it works. It's just a little strange. Is there any adjustments anywhere else? It doesn't. Okay, so as you can see, we have um, the camera setup working over there, the Genlock setup. You can see when you take the, um, <laughs> the, the, the picture away. We've got three mods here. We've got picture mode, that, and the mix mode, which you kind of fade between, which I expected this to do, you know, the fader. Here. It doesn't do that. The only thing I can see is when you take it all the way up, it just looks like it's very slightly burning it up. <laughs> Not really. No. So just put it in between just I guess. That's freaking annoying me. Yeah, I think it's some sort of sink thingy going loose or some dry joint or something like this. So you know I'm just gonna open that out and just sort of stupid pour it out. Because I think you know moving this around um, you know, it's moved house, it's moved into like three, four different rooms, <laughs> back and forth, and I think it's just become loose. So that's annoying. I'm gonna... It's one of those things that you thought you'd fixed, and you just thought you'd never have to go into it again. <laughs> It's one of those things, it's not the safest thing to fuck around with, even when you when you switch them off because you can hold charge that tube at the front, well the tube inside, I should say. It's just like a giant freaking capacitor, basically. And those things are not to be messed with. So I'm gonna have to discharge that first. video to be this, you know. <laughs> that to be like a repair thing. Okay, I'm gonna have to discharge this stupid thing. Right, so ground plane. Electrode. Whoa, there we go. That was quite a pop. Still going. And 
that is why you don't screw around with uh, CRTs and try and repair them. Because that would have probably floored you. Like thousands of volts. It's still sort of going. <laughs> yeah, I strongly advise to not repair your CRT yourself. Now, unless you're experienced or anything like this, but do not do it yourself. Just get someone who's done it before, who's got experience on it. And... Right, so this port here went loose. This is what I repaired last time, because it was just annoying. I've got a feeling there must be some dry drain or something's come up. Soldered it, made sure anything around doesn't have any dry joints. <sighs> I'm gonna resolder the actual cable itself and hopefully that'll sort this out. If not, I'm gonna have to kind of like investigate more what's going on here. That I sorted. The problem actually is with the RGB cable. It's so spindly and crap, I need to kind of make a new one for it because. Even when I was kind of trying to resolder the the um, cable itself, it just kept breaking. So I think this is just deteriorating. So what I've done is I've uh, connected this via monochrome for now. You know, or I mean, composite out on the Amiga 500. You have to have the modulator, which I did try and connect this via that um, through that because obviously the, the feed it needs the um, RGB. Um, but it kept coming out monochrome from there. However, when I connected it there, it was color. So clearly there's a monochrome signal, uh, sorry, the color is getting lost between there and there, whether it's, you know, chroma's connected or not, I don't know. Anyway, I wanna just get over with this, that's the main thing. This is like, just monitor, yeah. Okay, so the next step, now that I've got the um, video sorted, I wanna get the audio and that. No. As you can see here, this dude here has a nice old school DIN connection, and that is the, the input and output. And the only choice you have is monitoring is off and on. <laughs> I wish there was a bit more to that. I wish it was at least like two stages or three stages, but it's either off or what seems to be freaking loud. So I hope the Amiga's uh, output is not too loud for it. Um, let's try and connect this up here and see. Okay, so the only way to turn that on or activate it in these old decks is to literally just to record and pause. And of course turn on the power. <laughs> We're gonna be in the background. <laughs> And yeah, this game, even though it's a cover disc game, for some stupid reason, it's like NTSC. <laughs> so it'll flick into like 60 hertz mode. That's pretty loud. Hey, what was that? <laughs> Might actually pick another game, because this is gonna like flick to 60 hertz and go really quick. making a makeshift thing, it's not like a permanent thing or anything. I think I'm gonna do it with the um, RCA connections, which I'm dealing with at the moment. Right, we have our main components here. I'm not fussed about quality of build at the time, at this moment in time, it's just like a quick put together so I can just use it um, as long as it works. And as long as it stays, <laughs> that's what I'm um, bothered about right now. 
should probably make an inline volume control or something later on because, you know, clearly it's needed sometimes. I gotta find my freaking wire strippers when you need them. Go find the tools when you need them. Well, that's what happens when you're still sorting out and decorating and so forth. You know, everything's freaking everywhere. So there we go, done, quick and dirty for now. I don't need any like, you know, drastically clean job or anything on these. I just need them to function right now. So let's go back downstairs. So we're back down here. I have my connections and everything. And yes, it is uh, the next morning and it's much nicer and brighter here, <laughs> thankfully. Okay, so let's um, fire up the Amiga. I need to get that stupid lead sorted as well. So I can have like color RGB. <laughs> I got the monitor sorted at least. I have a bit of a loose connection, but no stupid leads on because it's thick. <laughs> Could just playing anything right now just to get the sound levels right on this thing. Actually, let's turn this up as well. Okay, so this is just way too loud for me. <laughs> actually make a, um, a thingy for this. No, like make a proper one with casing and, and everything like this rather than just hanging out in, in line like this. Okay, so now we've got the sound sorted. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of fun. Finally. <laughs> actually, it was kind of fun getting it all going. Okay, so we have visual sorted. Well, kind of. I still need to sort the RGB on. And we have sound sorted. Okay, so we seem to have the camera working, <laughs> and um, yeah, right, I've noticed one thing mm -hmm. about all this, this down sliding. I've noticed something in the sense of like, the signal the camera is giving out, and the signal that Amiga is giving out, if they mismatch a little bit, you're gonna get scrolling. In other words, um, you have 50 hertz from the camera, you know, it's giving a 50 hertz power signal. If the Amiga signal is just a little bit above or below or off 50 Hz, you're gonna get a little scroll. <laughs> and that's what I've noticed in this. Now, a lot of these games and programs suffered like Crazy Sue yesterday <laughs> or last night. It started scrolling. Now, soundtrack is scrolling, if you can see here. It's <laughs> scrolling because the camera frequency. Now, that only happens when you turn the camera on. If I disconnect the camera, it's fine. It seems to, the camera's um, frequency seems to be the dominant one, here. And slider does not do anything. So if you have to, unfortunately with sound tracker, I would love to use sound tracker in like, something like this because I, obviously sound tracker is my creative machine <laughs> that I use, but generally the stupid thing scrolls. Um, I recorded this one 
uh, is footage from the other night. As you can see, this one here, Miss Madeline and Channel footage take two. That's got a few nostalgia times recorded on it. So I need to kind of get them sorted as well. Hopefully I'll do some midweek nostalgia time gaming videos. And yeah, VHS ones, <laughs> usually. I just thought, why not? While I'm doing this project, let's just, you know, have some fun and do something a little bit different. <laughs> What I'm going to do is just use a brand new one for this um, video that I'm doing. So let's take... These tips basically got them from the car boot sale that time, you know, in the summer. It's them I'm using. I managed to have some new ones, brand new sealed. Now this is a Shark VCR. It's the one which my brother used to use. It is an absolutely beautiful. You'll recognize it when you see it. <laughs> I need to do that tape stretching thing. We still have a top loader, a Hitachi one. I can't, I really miss that one actually. I think if I see that anywhere, I'm, I'm gonna like jump on it. Has it forded already? It's quick. I'm just thinking here, is there any way to stop the scrolling? Because I mean, is there anything that you can adjust? Is there anything? I'm wondering if there's any like mod I can do. A line you can see it on this monitor affecting the, um, the signal as well. You can see that part that is going up. Everything ready now. Finally, it took like a day <laughs> to get everything just right. Uh, well, not in it's exactly just right, but I was supposed to record on this thing. And yay, I think we're here recording. <laughs> That's kind of like. This is so hard to do. How did. <laughs> Easy. Anyway, <laughs> right. So let's load the uh, deluxe pen here. Let's see me. Let's load the deluxe pen here. Oops. Right. So we have. Laura's oh, Okay, that's good. Let's just do Laura's for now. Nice. The screen's shifted. Thingy. The sync is just a bit off, I think. It's the camera sync that I think it needs adjusting. So yeah, we have the Lux pen now. Now let's draw myself <laughs> very badly. That's me. 
Sen kaç tane? Ne istedi be? Yine. It's so weird. It's just uncanny. It's not easy doing this with the mouse. I mean, I can talk. Um, I've stopped doing it. <laughs> no. Stupid ball mouse. Oh my god, that's actually not bad. <laughs> that's bad. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be worse than it is. <laughs> This is why I need a freaking color monitor here, and not this thing. I mean, this is fine, it's not this fault. I fixed it, it's good. It's this stupid cable! I've ordered one! I mean, I should really make one, but... Here it is. No, blue face. <laughs> no, I to do the other one. Next to it. <laughs> I need like the colors. Okay. The thing's not there. Anyway, I'm gonna save this to be honest. <laughs> I sort of like it. <laughs> I'll work on it later on. Oh my god, I forgot a kid again. <laughs> Oh, you freak, it's a stupid deserty layout on this thing. What the freak? <laughs> Fine. I'm just kidding with that. Go find the M. Whatever that is. Because let's just like go for it a little bit. Um, now that we've got this new skin, um, I'm gonna put some PD games on. <laughs> Just see what. I mean, if it does that thing, that scroll thing, I don't think it will. I think what it is, it's uh, when it's um, workbench intuition, the Windows, then it's fine. It's just that when it loads another screen, like on a game or something like this, um, it loads another screen, and that's what causes it, I think, to do that misaligned frequency, misaligned um, thingy. Ooh, actually it doesn't scroll, that's cool. So I can play like spa well, Space Invaders, Amoeba Invaders, <laughs> without it. Um... Ooh, that actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> With like, can be proper involved in the game now. Ever since that freaking sink mismatch thing has been happening, I've just been curious about inside here and what I could do and what there is. Quench that freaking curiosity of mine. <laughs> Ooh, so you got like two screws. <laughs> Ooh, okay. 
this this stuff. <laughs> some potentiometers here. Well, variable resistors. Well, two variable capacitors. You know, three variable capacitors. Ooh, I wonder if one of them adjusts the um, frequency because there is a crystal there. So I'm wondering if that crystal is more to do with the color. My curiosity has led me to good places. <laughs> I think I'm gonna test this, you know, what all these things do. Because there's a few things that I'm curious by. This, this stupid thing doesn't work. It's just, no matter what I do, it just doesn't do anything. And let's go test it. Ah, oh, hold on, this one trades between them, so, okay, I get it now. Oh, that's it. I was having issue with that. I felt it was too off center. Okay, so this few thing, things I've alleviated with this, well, a couple of things. Major things. Okay, that one I won't go from it too much. It's a shame that I cannot do anything to the actual, um, you know, align the actual signals itself. So these basically here affected, um, you know, different things. This one seems to affect the fading on this which is how I expected the gen log to work um, and also we see off but then this affects this affects the fading between one and the other it's like a transitional thing right whereas this one here it does that background you know mixes the signals um, and now they work as they should after goofing around with some of these. I'm so glad I opened this now. This one goofs around with some frequency, right? I don't want to mess with that too much. Um, this one adjusts the. Actually, what the frick did that one do? Oh, it is some color issue. Yeah, this color. This one is to do with the color. It seems to be the color temperature of the Amiga. Also seems to be the intensity of the color or again color temperature. Again, that's the fading thing. And this one here it seems to affect the the horizontal one. Okay, great, now I can properly have some fun with this. I'm I'm gonna look at more um, software on the Amiga for this. Um, I'm gonna learn that video titler a bit more, you know, just for, get, my, get annoyed a bit. Yay, we have the RGB sorted out now. Now, I sorted the monitor out because it had a wobbly connection in the back, so that needed like resoldering and reinforcing. And then, you know, the cable had issues, which, you know, I sorted that out, it was annoying, but it's perfect now. <laughs> and I've got that in full RGB color, the monitor. I'll put up the, um, the actual gen lock. And then we have this. Perfect. And now I can start having fun properly <laughs> rather than like guessing what color it is and not viewing it properly on a monochrome screen. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got the camera pointing outside right now. And uh, yeah, I thought why not because it's autumn and you know, autumn brings beautiful colors. And uh, yeah, it's quite picturesque, especially these stray leaves on this tree in the front garden. So what started all this off? All this VHS craze that seems to be happening now and all this like gen logs and everything which <laughs> which it branched into How did it all start off? And what started off? Well, it was this this thing here this TV And uh, with a DVD player built in and uh, both Rich and I Rich especially since it's his to begin with <laughs> Didn't notice this big massive RW that's written there and I said to him why does it say RW? Is this a recorder? And it turns out that it is a DVD recorder. <laughs> so 
I wanted to kind of like, you know, just mess around while I was bringing my Commodore 64, you know, downstairs to kind of play on it. I was playing games on this and I just wanted to kind of like see, okay, I want to make a little um, mess around and make a little DVD out of it, <laughs> you know, out of the footage that I was doing there. And uh, I scrambled around the house because all my blank DVDs are actually, you know, at my old place. So, yeah. The only one scrambling around, Rich said he had one rewritable somewhere. Well, I tried this. And um, even though I've erased that disc, as in like a full erase so it can be played anywhere, it ends up saying no disc. And there was literally nothing. <laughs> you know, I was looking forward to it and so forth. I spent ages. It <laughs> left me with that itch that was not scratched. So I saw this. Um, VCR in the corner, and I thought, hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to start messing around with it. And yeah, that's how my crazy, um, my crazy phases start. <laughs> you know, with something or other, I start messing around with. So yeah, that's the backstory on how it all began. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so weird. I'm gonna stop doing that though. <laughs> I have much more that I've filmed as I was having a lot of fun with all this stuff, but I've decided to leave it for now as this video is getting quite long. However, I've decided to put together another upcoming video with more fun I'm having and more that I wish to do with the Amiga, Genlock, VHS and more. So, thanks so much for your likes, your shares, to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel, especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbett, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Veronica Explains, and Chris Sebelansky. Have a lovely evening everyone. Until next time, adios!